grades six to eight will enjoy the mini mathematical universe that I'm gonna present now. Mini mathematical universes are the best way to teach inductive problem solving and the scientific method. Ironically, the scientific method is not best taught in the science class. And that's because in the math class, we can construct a mini mathematical universe whose rules are meant to be discovered. Whereas the rules governing the real universe are very complex and are not easy to discover even for adults. So here is a mini mathematical universe designed for grades six through eight. Take a few minutes to just look at this compilation of squares with all different colors. Like what on earth is going on here? Don't rush this, just see if you can have any hypotheses. What do you notice? What observations do you and your kids make about this single diagram? Okay, now I'm gonna give you some more hints about what's going on. The first hint that I'm gonna give you is the number 40. You can keep on going at any point, you can stop at any point, and uh, I'm just gonna go whizzing through a whole bunch of clues. So you should stop, uh, stop me in my tracks anytime that you think you might have an idea here about what's going on. 41, again, any hypotheses that you make are, should be noted and uh, wrong hypotheses are always celebrated even more than the right hypotheses. We want to have those hypotheses flowing in the class. 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, and 50. And this is where I'm gonna stop, but you can keep on going forever with this pattern. So have you discovered some things about this pattern? Have you got some hypotheses? Well, apart from the central dot, apart from that central square, all of these regions are kind of like lines and they're, they're all, the numbers in them are interesting because they all seem to be prime numbers apart from that one in the center. So um, right here, for example, I have two and then this would be three and then here is four, but why are there not four squares? Well, they're not four squares because, because the largest prime factor of four is two. Here we have five, here we have six, here we have seven, here we have eight. The largest prime factor of eight is two. Here we have nine, here we have 10, here we have 11, a prime number. That's why we have 11 squares, 12, 13, and so on. So we're just spiraling out from this central square. Okay, you've got it all except for the colors. So now I want you to think about what the heck is going on with these colors, if you haven't already figured it out. Okay, so what's going on with the colors? Let, uh, let me give you a clue and let's go back to the 40. There we go. And let me just leave you. And it looks like that's no help at all, or is it? So the way to look at this is you always try to put the lowest square possible. So yellow is the lowest. So you will always try to use a yellow if you can. So here we start off with a yellow and then it's map color. You can never place two regions that share the same color. So after uh, uh, this one, the two, well, it can't be yellow. And after the, uh, because they touch and the three here, it can't be either orange or yellow because uh, it touches both. So this three has to be a different color. It has to be pink. That's the lowest you can go. Uh, the next one, oh, we can go back down to orange again. Then we can go back to yellow, but then we have something that touches yellow 
This is for the number six. We have something touching yellow and orange and pink. So we have to come up with a new color. And that is purple. We can keep on going with this same pattern. And that is how we created this diagram. Now, you should be asking questions here, questions that now I don't know the answer to. The biggest question, I'll, I'll leave to the end, but let, let's just finish this off. So 41, 42, you should figure out why, why these are all the colors that they are. What's the color for 43 coming up? Well, 43 is going to touch many of these existing ones. So it has to have the blue, then 44, and 45, well, 45, you could figure out what color that's going to be. Okay, hope you were right. And there we go, 48, 49, and 50. Okay, what's the question that comes into your mind? Well, the question that comes into my mind is, how many colors do you need? So here we're just at 50. What happens if I'm going to a million? How many colors do I need? Will I ever need this um, turquoise? I don't know the answer to that. And I don't know, maybe you need an infinite number of colors. I don't know. So this is an interesting puzzle for me. And it's also beautiful. Some of you have asked, where do these puzzle designs come from? And uh, as a creative person, it's maybe interesting to have some insight onto the creative process. So first of all, these didn't come out of the blue. This didn't come out of the blue. This was a week. Uh, every week I, I spend trying to make these puzzles. And this was a week where I started off with this. You can try to figure out what's going on here. But I'm just going to tell you. Um, so for example, for the one on the bottom, I am First of all, putting in a yellow one. Then I'm putting in a two, then a three, then a four, then a five. And then I go back again to putting in a one. Now this one, I'm always trying to put them as far to the left as possible. And if there's uh, a tie, then I'm trying to put them as far down as possible. So then this yellow got put in. And so I'm, I keep on cycling through. Um, so this cycles through from one to five, this cycles from one to four, this is cycling from one to three. And some of these end up with these beautiful patterns. Let me just finish off the whole pattern. And you can see that they become periodic. So there's the, the minimum period. Here we have a period of two, three, two again, a period of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, a period of 10, and a period of six. So interesting different periods. Uh, I also, I, I was kind of enjoying this. I didn't think it was quite good enough for you guys, but I, I kept on playing with it. Um, then I did all of this. Now I do all of this by hand. So it's incredibly time consuming. So just so you don't have the, the, the feeling like I just come out up with these ideas really quickly. This, this There's a, a lot of Edison in here too, right? That you just have to, it's not all creativity. So here, I'm just, I'll just finish off this. Um, but I, I, I am stimulated by beauty, and I do love these period periodic structures that have occurred. I didn't think this was quite good enough, especially because it didn't have that big question. What I really loved about the problem that we ended up with is that I don't know the answer to how many colors I'm going to need if I go to a million, if I go to a billion. I don't have a good feel for that. So that's that's really fascinating for me. Okay, let's go to where I went from here. So then I went to, okay, let's see, could I try to look for a minimum perimeter in the first quadrant? So uh, it can't, the, the objects can't go left of this line and can't go below this line. So I start with a zero and I start with a two and then a three. And I, I'm keeping on placing them and I'm trying to find a, some kind of minimum perimeter or, or anyway, I don't, I don't know exactly what I'm doing here, uh, but I, I was trying many different things. 
then I tried doing it without any constraints, um, left, right, up, down. So here it can grow in all different directions. Zero, one, um, then I have two. Oh, and this, this time, what I, was going to, what I was trying to do is I was trying to have the maximum possible number that you can create. And you have to place a zero if you can. Um, after, so you place your block, let's see. So here, you, you see you've placed your blocks and then you're numbering uh, as you go. So I place the zero, it has to be yellow. Then I place the one, then I'm placing the two. I'm not gonna go into it because it failed. I, I felt, uh, I, I ended up thinking that strips were best and then I just, I just wasn't happy. It wasn't super interesting. I couldn't get these numbers to the point that they were really interesting. It, this is all aesthetics and just intuition too. It's not, I, I can't tell you that it was wrong. I just didn't enjoy the puzzle as much. So this I also deemed a failure. I also find it very difficult to count these after a while. So here I'm getting up to 11. I, I have the numbers one to 11, but it's not clear right away that this is an, a strip of size 11. So it became cumbersome a little bit. Um, whenever I add all these numbers together, the maximum I could get was 16. So kind of interesting. With 13, the highest I could get was 18. Kind of interesting, but maybe not super interesting. Then I started, and now you'll start to see the, the problem that we, we ended up with. Then I started to think, okay, let's put, uh, let's do a tiling of a circle just going around in, uh, in a spiral with the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Why didn't I love this? So I, I didn't love this because I think I can prove that there's a specific pattern here that's, that's going to be um, not going beyond uh, four. And I, I, think, I think it might not even get to four. So I might just have three, three numbers. At most, I'm going to have four numbers here. And it's, it's too periodic. I can predict it too easily. The one that I ended up with, of course, uh, this one, this one, you look at it, and it's not as easy to figure out the rules. So the rules had to be a little bit complex. That's why you got this puzzle. 